as you asked about earlier, are there savings potentials in new homes? If it was built in the early 1900s, they framed homes differently and they plastered differently. But in a new home, there is always very often what's called top plate air leakage. So on the interior of this wall, this is a two by four and there's drywall here and drywall on the backside, but where that meets the attic, there's a little gap up there. And so air, this heated air at 65 degrees on this side, 65 degrees in the closet and 65 degrees within this wall cavity as well. Everything's in equilibrium here. And that warm air in the winter rises up to that cold attic and escapes through that, through what's called the top plate. And those are never sealed and it's just a constant heat loss straight through there. When we depressurize the house, we're drawing attic air in through all those leaks in the attic. So if we look with our heat seeking camera, this is something you'd never be able to see or know about without an infrared camera. I'm looking at the intersection between this wall and the attic. So right there, see how warm that wow. is? Wow, you, you can definitely see. Right now it's being pulled in, but when the fan's not on in the winter, it's escaping. And in the summer, the opposite happens when it's warmer in the attic and cooler in the house. And they use air conditioning here, so it is going to be cooler in the house. That warm air is going to penetrate down into the walls, and it's going to make the air conditioning system have to work a lot harder to keep that same temperature. So sealing up the top plates is really one of the keys to energy efficiency. People, before you insulate your attic, if you want to add insulation to your attic, or if you're a new builder and listening to this, you really should seal up your top plates before you put in any insulation. Because if you don't seal up your top plates, then the insulation is not going to stop the air movement, so you're going to have air just exhausting up into the attic. We've talked about a lot of different things already. If you make the house as near perfect as you can, high efficiency boiler or furnace, seal up all these escape routes. What percentage of your heating bill do you think you could you could save by doing that? Probably a 30, 40 percent reduction in your heating bill. Is there such an idea of over sealing your house? Builders often say that a house needs to breathe, which is which is sort of true. A house needs to be ventilated. Uh, there needs to be exchange of fresh air from the outside exhausting the indoor air. The idea of new energy efficient new construction and what we're trying to do here in terms of the retrofit world is tighten up a home as tight as you possibly can get it. And then what you want to do is you want to control the ventilation. Breathing is just leakage and maybe it's way too much, maybe it's too little, it's almost always way too much. But you have no control over it. You can't, you can't do anything about it. What you want to do is seal it up as tight as you can and then install some mechanical ventilation. It can be as simple as a bath fan that's on a timer. Get a nice, energy efficient, quiet bath fan. It costs $150, $200. You put it on a timer and you run it three hours a day, four hours a day. We know that there's air conditioning here in the home. Uh, great, nice and comfortable. All of the ductwork, or the majority of the ductwork, is upstairs in the attic, uh, which is the way it's usually done. Problem is, it gets really warm in the attic, and you want the ductwork to remain fairly cold. So, there's two issues. One, it should be well insulated. But even more importantly, it should be well sealed. So if I put my hand up here, you can feel that there's air coming down through the ductwork. And ideally, that should all be sealed tight and you wouldn't feel any air coming down there. However, it indicates that there is some leakage up there because air is being pulled through the ductwork. And if I look at that with my heat seeking camera, the infrared camera here, it's quite warm up there. And if I look at the pull down attic stairs here. In my attic, they built a little sliding cover that we put on, and the cover is insulated. That's right. the type of thing that you do to... Yep. We're going up into the attic, and uh, this is what I, my sacrifice that I make for this TV show. You're going to come down sweating. You're right. And for those of you at home, don't try this with a jacket and tie on. Uh, this is a very rare situation up here where it's a new home, but there's actually no insulation in the attic whatsoever. There's a tiny little piece underneath that board there, but otherwise there is zero insulation, which is pretty shocking. So obviously there's something going on because by code this has to be insulated when it was built, and no one's going to remove the insulation just because they don't like insulation. So we talked to the homeowner, and it, it turns out that the bath van was vented directly into the attic not to outside, which is a major problem because you produce a lot of moisture during showers, 
and all that moisture is now getting dumped into the cold attic. The cold attic is below the dew point, so that warm, moist air that's carrying a lot of, that warm air is carrying a lot of moisture, condenses on everything up here, on the floor, on the sheathing, all over the place. So there's a major mold issue up here, so they had to remove all of the fiberglass insulation, um, which is terrible for an energy efficiency standpoint. It's great for a teaching standpoint, so we have a great opportunity to, one, make an improvement by re-insulating it and insulating it correctly, uh, and this is a, an ideal place to air seal now because there's no insulation in the way that we have to move. So if you look right here, this is what's called a top plate, as we were talking about earlier. This is that 2x4, this is that closet wall, the exact one that we were pointing to. This is the top plate, air leakage here, air leakage there, and it runs, I mean, even if you turn off the light, you can see daylight through the top plates. So every top plate, every interior wall, there's a probably... 70 feet or 80 feet or 90 feet or something like that of interior walls in here uh, Every single one of these two on both sides. There's air just exhausting into the attic So what we'd recommend is someone comes up here. It's a pretty small attic. It's pretty manageable. It's clean There's no insulation uh, The ductwork is pretty easy to move you come up here with some spray foam and you seal up every crack and gap you seal up around the registers where the ductwork goes back into the goes through the drywall. You seal up around the bath van. You seal up around. You can walk over there and check it out. You seal up around all the plumbing and piping penetrations, so that it's an airtight as airtight as you can get it, uh, plain. And then you re-insulate. And here you'd probably blow cellulose, which is ground up newspaper treated with some boric acid, which is inert to humans, but pest retardant and flame retardant. Uh, so you blow cellulose in here, and ideally, in the areas that are not floored, you'd get it up above the joist. Maybe you'd put in 10, 12, 15 inches. Once they're here, you might as well put in more because the, the additional cost for a little bit more insulation, once they're out here, is not very much. So insulate above the rafters so that you avoid what's called thermal bridging, where the rafters are carrying heat directly from the heated space up into the attic. If you insulate above them, that creates a little bit of buffer so you don't get that heat loss every 16 inches. If you were um, working on a house that didn't have the unusual situation where they had to remove the uh, insulation, would you be removing it and sealing up these plates? Generally, the insulation is subpar, and so it's not perfectly laid out, and so moving it around is not that costly, especially if you're going to insulate over it. So we'd basically just push the insulation out of the way, seal up all the top plates, just like we did, push the insulation back, and then ideally add insulation above that as well. Based on, on what we just saw, I want to ask you about the stack effect, and I want to do it for two reasons. One is so I sound intelligent on the subject, but secondly because I think it's a key concept to what we're uh, talking about and saving energy. Why don't you do talk a little about that? Well, the stack effect is it generally looks at the house and the way air flows through the house. Um, and it kind of works in two ways, one way in the summer, uh, another way in the winter. Um, the easiest way to, to explain it is in the wintertime, everyone understands that hot air rises. Um, in the wintertime, as the hot air in your home is rising, it's finding these penetrations that we saw before and going through these walls and exiting through these top plates into the attic. Um, what happens is the hot air is rising from the house and from the basement, uh, the cold air is being pulled in by the vacuum that's created by the hot air rising. So the stack effect is based on the idea of the, the winter time where the heat is going up the stack of the house and exiting into the attic space. Um, there are some, not only is this an energy loss issue, but oftentimes the amount of heat that's going into the attic space in the winter time, if you notice, um, driving around Needham in, in the winter, some houses don't have any snow on it after a snowfall. That's basically because there's so much heat escaping that it's melting the snow on the house, and this is actually a big cause of ice dams. Um, in the winter time, it's the reverse. Cold air sinks. It's pulling the hot air from the attic down through these wall cavities, exiting out through all these penetrations, and making a system, an air conditioning system, work harder to keep the temperature in the house the same.